Hi FlossTube, welcome to my channel. My name is Kim and I am Barbara's daughter. It has been quite a while, over a month definitely, since I made a floss tube. And I wish I could tell you that I have loads to share with you, but actually I haven't been stitching a lot. Um, I've been stitching like maybe an hour a day or so, but it's been very busy here with back to school time and just crazy end of the summer busyness. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I actually came down here and filmed an update that was only like 11 minutes long. So I never posted it. So what I'm going to do is play that as the first part of this video and show you the progress that I had made up until about two weeks ago. And then I'm going to come back today and show you the progress I've made since that video. So I'm um, going to cut away here to that video from a few weeks ago, and I hope you enjoy seeing what I was stitching on. Hi FlossTube, my name is Kim and I am Barbara's daughter. Thanks for joining me today for another um, floss tube video where I show you what I've been stitching on. Today probably is going to be a pretty short video because I've only worked on three things since my last floss tube video. I'm actually really excited about those three things though and um, looking forward to showing you what I've got. So I'm going to start with um, what most people said I should uh, start when they were watching my kitted floss tube, excuse me, my kitted projects floss tube uh, from a couple of weeks ago. And that is the laundry series. So I have one of these done and I am now doing loads of fun by Hands on Design, but I have changed the colors to be more teal and red and um, gray instead of the um, kind of like mustardy yellow color that's in there. So I'll just kind of hold this up with the, with the, uh, picture. So hopefully you can see, I did iron this, but it still looks kind of wrinkly there on the, uh, board, but you can see I've, I've got a, a fairly good start. I'm probably about halfway, uh, down, done with this project. It's not terribly big. This is a, um, just got a piece of 36 count. I don't know the color or the dyer. It, I started the first one of these probably about four years ago and did not write down the fabric. So I, I don't really know um, what fabric it is. The red that I am using, um, actually none of the colors are called for, I don't think. Um, no, because the, she calls for DMC. So I am using... Um, Victorian Motto Cherry Pie for my red, and, um, oh, I can't hang that one. I am um, using Espresso Bean for this dark, that's a um, gentle arts color, this dark uh, brown, which is the words in here. And then I have, um, sometimes there's some white in there, so I'm using Chalk by Gentle Arts for that. I do have kind of a yellowy color, but I haven't used it yet. I, I kept it here. It's Antique Yellow by Victorian Motto. I kept it in case I was decided to do the clothespins yellow, but then I went ahead and did them in blue. I think I like it in blue better, so I have the yellow maybe for the third one if I need it, but I haven't used it yet. Um, and then there's a, a teal color Weeks Capri or Capri. That's the blue. And um, there's also a um, lighter gray color, which is Victorian motto Rock Cliffs. So um, I'm hoping that by the time I get my next plus two video up, this is done. And then I can move on to the third and final one in this series, which is Irony, uh, the opposite of Wrinkly. So that's actually going to be a fun one, I think, because it has like the washer, the dryer, the iron, the ironing boards. I think that's going to be cute. So I spent uh, two or three days on that. And then I went back to, I've been working on um, the Blue Flower Huckleberry Farm. And I really am fairly close to a finish. I really want to finish this soon. So I worked on this for um, almost a week and I'm getting there. This is on the called for picture this plus 36 count shale. 
and it's using the Colfer colors. But what I did was instead of using the yellow for the house, I used one of the other um, colors that is called for. Let me pull it out here. Um, I used Weeks Twilight for the house. It's used in the piece, but in very small spots in other areas. So I used it for the house and then I put some in the butterfly. The butterfly is not really supposed to have blue there. And then at the bottom, so what I have left to do is this woman and the flowers and she's got some a bear and a bird there and some other motifs. I have all these motifs here to do. And her dress is like a purple color, but I'm gonna do it in blue because I wanted to have the blue go throughout the piece so it looked more intentional, like it was supposed to be a blue house instead of a yellow house. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to finish that. And I don't usually work on a project for more than like, I don't know, two or three days before I get bored. But this one I worked on for quite a while. And the only reason why I stopped working on this one was because I wanted to um, start my next project, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but I kind of want to get back to this and finish it up because it's a big project. I've actually had it since it came out in 2020. I've been working on it for um, probably over a year, just here and there. And um, working on it more consistently over the past few months. So I'd like to get it done. All right, but I got excited about starting Pandemic, which I had kitted up with a fabric that I didn't really love. So I went to Barefoot Needle Arts and um, I had shown you some of my haul earlier um, with that, but I um, they had a trunk show of Atomic Ranch fabric and I think this is called Freeze, F-R-I-E-Z-E. -E. It's 36 count. And that's a pretty accurate color there. Um, so I decided to use that with my Silks For You Red Floss. This doesn't have a name, but it's PR126 from Silks For You. And um, I, what I did was cut out the very, very light part of this red. Um, I got a whole hank and that's way more than I need. And so I laid it all out on the table and I saw that there were some very light, almost pink sections and it was all in one area. So I cut out probably a three or four inch section of the floss um, and I'm using more of the darker parts of it. So I have stitched so far 1,317 stitches out of like 77,000 stitches. So it's only 1.7% done. I went all across the top of my half yard of fabric that I bought. And I did that to make sure it was kind of centered. I know I have plenty going lengthwise, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough going uh, on either side um, widthwise. And then I, uh, it doesn't look like 1300 stitches, but I got a little bird and a little motif in the corner. And then I started on this motif here, which is going to go all the way down and be like a cross uh, eventually. So it's uh, pretty large. And I have um, had this in Pattern Keeper. So I was going to show you uh, just in case no one, I'm sure everybody knows what Pandemic looks like, but this is by Long Dog Samplers and it is, um, you know, you could do it in multiple colors, but um, I'm doing it in just the one color. And um, yeah, so I am up in this very top corner here <laughs> and working on that. And I'm really enjoying it. I love working with just one color. I feel like it's um, a lot of, it's easier, you know, you don't have to think about changing colors. It saves you time when you're changing. You just keep using the same color. When you run out of floss, just grab some more. And this Silks For You floss is very soft. I like using it. It is um, very thick, which is nice. It makes the coverage, I'm not sure how well you can see, but makes the coverage really good on 36 count with one strand. And um, it is a, it's a, like a little fuzzy, but not in a bad way. Like I think that just, it's that's why it's thick. It's a little fuzzier than normal floss. Um, 
but it's not, it doesn't look fuzzy on here. Like it's not a problem. Um, it's just that when I'm stitching with it, I notice it's like a little fuzzy. So um, that is all that I have been stitching on for the past two weeks. I uh, did not really get any haul. I, I was telling my mom that I have so many projects that are kitted that I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to say that I'm not buying anything because as we all know, buying cross stitch supplies is like a hobby onto itself. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether we stitch them or not. The collecting is part of the hobby, but I think I'll just work on like, if I see a pattern I love, I'll get it. Otherwise, I'll just add it to my one, two, three stitch wish list and, you know, so I don't forget about them. But I'm not going to like kit up any projects right now because I have, you saw how many, like 30 some projects that are kitted and ready to go. And they're all really nice and I really want to stitch them. But a lot of times what I do is I kit something up and stitch on the new thing that I just kitted up instead of the things that I've had kitted for so long, like the laundry series. So I'm trying to do a little bit of both here. Pandemic is, you know, one of the more recent um acquisitions that I have. And of course, you know, finishing up the laundry series would be great to get rid of like an older project, get that on my walls. And I just really want to use what I have and not be wasteful um, with my supplies or with my money. So um, I don't know how long this will last, but I, I'm just going to try not to um, purchase too much in the way of like fabric or floss unless I'm going to start it right away for some reason. Now, there's no sense in having it sitting in a bag. I already have plenty of stuff sitting in bags. So um, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, as far as plans, these three pieces that I just showed you are probably what I'm going to work on definitely for this next week. And then as soon as I finish the laundry um, piece, which I definitely think I can finish um, in this next two weeks, and maybe even the... Um, Huckleberry Farm. But as soon as I finish those, then I'll rotate in some more. Uh, pandemic is obviously going to take years <laughs> to get done, but um, it's okay. Sometimes we have big projects, right? Um, okay, so I hope you enjoyed seeing a few of the pieces that I worked on at the end of the summer. After that video, I really decided I wanted to concentrate on Huckleberry Farm and I wanted to finish it. And it took forever, but I finished it. Um, so just as a reminder, this is what it looks like. It is called Huckle Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. I stitched this on 36 count Picture This Plus Shale, which is a called for fabric. And I used the called for colors, but within those called for colors, I switched some around. So my house up top is not yellow, it's blue. The woman's dress at the bottom is shades of blue. And uh, part of the butterfly is blue because I wanted to carry that through the whole piece. And um, by, the, by the time I was done with my previous video, I had said, I am not stitching on anything else but this till it's finished. And boy, was I sick of stitching on this, but I'm super happy that it's done. It's a big piece to be completed. And here it is. Um, I, I don't think the color of the fabric is showing up at all the way it is supposed to. This is a very purpley gray color. And, um, I think it just shows up as gray and in all the pictures I've taken, it just shows up that way too. But if you look at the picture, I think that gives it a more accurate uh, color as to what the fabric looks like. It's just not coming through. Um, and I do have very bright lighting down here, but it's just not for whatever reason coming through in the pictures or video that I'm taking. So I'm really happy to have this done and I'm going to, put it uh, away until I can find a frame for it and get it up on the wall because that was a long time stitching and I definitely want to display uh, all the hard work I did on it. I did have another finish, which was the laundry um, series from Hands On Design that I've been working on. I had stitched the first piece, which just to remind you is this one, well, I don't know if it's the first one. It's the first one I did. Laundry, the never ending cycle. I changed out the color. She had a lot of like mustard color and the teal blue and I added some red and some kind of like taupe grays in there. So that was the first one. And then the one that I finished was um, self-service loads of fun. So here's what that one looks like. And 
And so there are three of these plus a, um, like a bonus chart that says wash, dry, fold. I'm not sure I'm going to stitch that one. I might just do these three. Um, we'll see. So those are my finishes and I had one new start. It was a small little start because I just finished the Huckleberry Farm um, yesterday. So I haven't gotten much done on this, but I said, all right, I've got two out of three done. Just like I said, I wasn't t stitching anything else until Huckleberry Farm is done. Now I feel like I'm not stitching anything else until this is done. Then I can get all three frames um, and up on the wall in my laundry room. I actually have signs all over my laundry room. And if I remember, I will put in like a little video or a picture here of what is hanging on the wall in my laundry room. So um, I'm not sure that I'm going to frame it like this, or I might try and find a five, a frame that has three five by sevens like all in a row next to each other. So it's one frame. I'm not sure because I already have a lot of wall space taken up in there. So I don't know that I have room for three of these separately, but she did it in like an eight by 10 frame. I'm not sure I have room for that. So we'll see. But I've only just started the first um, line, which says irony. And um, this is stitched on a 36 count fabric, but I don't remember the name of it. With, again, just colors that I uh, grabbed out of my stash. If you want to know what colors I'm using, drop me a comment and I'm happy to type them out for you. Um, but it's just really like a red, a black, a teal, a gray, just some um, basic colors I had in my stash. So that's really all the stitching that I have been doing. Um, I was super happy to have a couple finishes and um, just trying to use up some of the stuff that I already have. Not to say I'm not going to buy anything, um, but I'm trying not to like kit up things with fabric and floss when I have so many kitted projects and in progress projects going on. It just seems like I've gotten a little out of hand with that. So um, I did get some happy mail, a very nice thank you card from Donna. She had won a giveaway that I did for, um, I did two of them and she had won the one for the Star Spangled Ornaments from um, Fat Quarter Shop. And so she sent me a very nice thank you card and some classic Colorworks thread, which we all always need some extra floss. So that was very nice. Thank you so much, Donna. You didn't have to do that, but everyone always loves receiving happy mail. So that was really nice to get. My plans for the next couple weeks are to focus on the um, laundry series, Irony, that last one. Um, hoping I can finish that up in about a week. Just stitch only on that. And then after that, I don't really know when I'm going to pick up, but um, I really... Um, feeling like I might like to work on Pandemic or my um, other piece that I started and I haven't touched in a long time, which is my full coverage piece, um, Farewell to Anger. So maybe one of those will make an appearance in the next video. I think I'm going to plan on just coming back when I have um, a good amount of stitchy progress to show you. Maybe that will be two weeks or three weeks or a month or so. I'm not really sure, but from now until like November, December is definitely my busiest time of year. So I'm not going to stress out about trying to get a video up like exactly every two weeks. I'm just going to stitch because I enjoy it when I have time. And when I have a bunch of stuff together to show you, I will be, be back to show it all to you. So thank you so much for stopping by to see what I have been stitching on. I hope you have been stitching on some wonderful projects and enjoying your stitchy time. And um, until I make my next video, happy stitching.